Great pleasure to have on the line with me, Cathy Vogan, Australian artist, lecturer in film and uh, independent journalist with Thing to Thing and other publications. Thanks for joining us, Cathy. Pleased to be here, Karen. We're going to have a chat today about this Cambridge Analytica data breach, which obviously uh, Facebook has been a big part of that story. Can you give our listeners just a little bit of a, a nutshell of that story if they've, they've missed it? Well, well, is it news or is it just pretending to be news? So Facebook have known about this. Most of it happened in 2014, uh, around then. So they've known about it and, and even written quite threatening letters in 2016. But they've known since 2015 about the big extraction. Uh, it wasn't exactly illegal, uh, but it was an extraction of people's information for academic purposes by people who were working in the University of Cambridge. So we first have Dr. Michael Kaczynski, who seemed to be the good guy. And then we have Dr. Alexander Kogan, who was the one who ended up forming his own private company and then selling this on to Cambridge Analytica. So it was all a fairly innocent study, well, disinterested study, let's put it that way, that was just for academics originally, but a data set this size, and, and it was an unexpected one, Kaczynski, Dr. Michael Kaczynski, M-A-C-H-A-L, he was doing personality testing and he thought he would get, he was hoping that he would get a reasonable sized data set, but he, he got over a million people. Mm. And once uh, responding to his personality quiz, now that's the Ocean Personality Test, O-C-E-A-N, which is a, it's an acronym for the five different parameters of one's personality. And once word got around that the data set was so huge, everybody wanted it. Mm. Now, Cambridge Analytica, I'm sure people know already because there's just so many stories being written. Mm. They are not new. They are the filial of a company called SCL, and they've been around for over 25 years. And SCL are a former British intelligence, some coming from the Navy, some from military background. They're called MI6 for hire fondly named that. They've been going for a very long time and they usually work for governments and military clients in the business of changing the behaviour of populations. So psychological operations, or as we call them, psyops, but on a large scale and for governments and the military. Um, so so uh, taking it right to today, we just learned that they got the idea to go into a new business for election campaign services from a certain young lady that arrived around 2013. And she was actually the daughter of Eric Schmidt, the, the uh, former chairman of, of Google. And she said that she was linked to Palantir Technologies, who are an intelligence company, high profile private intelligence company in the US very high profile in fact and she talked SEL into getting into this election campaigning thing and also uh, got them interested in the use of big data in fact what she was really talking about was it's possible to get large amounts of information about citizens mm. anything you want to know yeah. and there's money to be made in selling this to political parties in order to win elections. And so they did. SCL first created a branch called SCL Elections, and then that later became a new company called Cambridge Analytica. And incidentally, the person who chose the name was none other than Steve Bannon. Oh, mate, Steve Bannon, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just to uh, give an example of how successful... SEL and Cambridge Analytica were in, in their normal business, in their business as usual of controlling populations. Cambridge Analytica got a job in Trinidad and the job was to, um, this is real minority report stuff, mm -hmm. the, the job was to create a national police database that would score every single citizen 
on their propensity to commit a crime, mm. right? Pre-crime stuff. <laughs> and in order to be able to do that, they were given access to everybody's private phone conversations and their email. Now, that's prison-like access. <laughs> we're talking William Binney, Edward Snowden, yeah. revelations level access. So that was Cambridge Analytica. And in fact, elections is only 20% of what they do. So, in fact, what we have here is this really scary crosstalk going on between tech companies mm. that store our personal information, such as Google and Facebook, social media and the like, the intelligence community, and now election campaign companies and the politicians themselves. So, basically, you've got this very clear channel of us being, I don't believe that people voluntarily gave their information. They didn't. They mm. were tri tricked yep. into it. Yeah, they wanted to play the quiz. They, they, you know, they wanted to find out more about themselves. Who reads the the T and C's, the terms and conditions? Yeah. You don't want to yeah. do that. You just want to go and do the test That's it, yeah. and find out more about yourself. So, so I mean, we, we, we really, we've really got a situation here, as if there was any doubt, um, which I'm sure people like yourself and myself uh, and many of our listeners wouldn't have too much doubt. But for the public uh, at writ, um, you know, Julian Assange's uh, numerous statements over the years uh, suggesting, you know, Facebook and co being the privatisation of the CIA, this is really just uh, if, as if there was any doubt that that was the case. This is well and truly... Uh, expose that, yeah? Absolutely. Julian was talking about this, um, getting very clear about it in 2011. Mm. So I should say WikiLeaks, bringing out spy files. Mm. It took Edward Snowden to come along to give us the smoking gun, documents re regarding PRISM and X key score. But I think that back then, in 2011, Assange said that Facebook was the biggest spying machine in the world. Yeah. And I thought, oh, hyperbole. But in fact, we have now seen that this is the case. But it's funny because I just read my 2014 investigation into Palantir Technologies because now there's three intelligence agencies. It's not that help Trump. So there's Palantir Technologies as well as mm. Cambridge Analytica. And there's also another intelligence agency called QUID who haven't looked into too much, but they seem to do imaging. So I thought it was hyperbole, but already back in 2014, I was actually writing about Palantir's... They're very interesting. Yeah. They're very yeah. cynically named, you know. The <laughs> palantir stones in yeah. Lord of the Rings, uh, of which course, were very yeah. deceptive. They could only see shadows. They would mislead people. And in fact, what Palantir have been doing is following people's digital footprint mm. in order to predict what they are going to do next. It's frightening stuff. Uh, what, what, not very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> it what, what can you tell us, Cathy, about the, this uh, whistleblower, Christopher Wiley? Is what's, how important is that particular oh, character to this so story? Yep. Yes. Chris Wiley, um, he's the one that ties it all together. So he recruited... Aggregate IQ, who were the company who did the analytics for the Leave EU Brexit campaign. And that was, that was very dodgy because there was four different campaigns that weren't s supposed to collaborate. There was Vote Leave, there was Be Leave, the Young People's Movement, there was Veterans for Britain, and there was the DAP, the Democratic Unionist Party, who all spent their money in the same shop with Aggregate IQ. And I mean, the big stink at the moment, and there's another whistleblower now, whose name is Shamir Sami. So he's come up now, he's the latest one after Chris Wiley. And he was the treasurer and secretary for Believe. The movement that was created really just before the referendum happened because mm. there was so much money being donated to the Leave campaign. They've got a £7 million spending limit. Yep. And uh, so there's these two young lads that were working there uh, for Vote Leave. And they never left the building, but Diane Grimes, he's only just turned 25 now, he was... He was persuaded to sign all these papers. Now, Chris Wiley has provided all of this information. Mm. Now, it's clear that Cambridge Analytica, in fact, were involved in Brexit as well. 
That was Kathy Vogan uh, from uh, Thing to Thing. You can find uh, her offerings uh, at that website, thingtothing.com, I believe it is, or Google that. And, um, yeah, if you want to just chase that story up more broadly, uh, there's some great stuff, particularly from uh, Carol Cadwallader from The Guardian. And you're on the Indie Media Show on RTRFM 92.1.